Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter Thermodynamics. Moving on with our discussion of the applications of the first law of thermodynamics where I was telling you about its applications in terms of work. In the previous two videos, I told you about irreversible processes and reversible processes and how we calculate work in terms of these processes. Also, I explained to you that if we take a cylinder with a frictionless piston in it, the pressure outside, if it is more than the pressure inside the cylinder, then the external pressure, the molecules which or air or the atmosphere, which is exerting pressure on the uh, piston, it pushes the piston downwards, thereby causing a contraction in the gas. And if, on the other hand, the pressure of the ideal gas taken inside the cylinder is more than the external pressure, what would happen? That would, the gas inside would push the piston upwards until it reaches a state where of equilibrium, where the external pressure becomes equal to the internal pressure. So, if the pre internal pressure is greater than the external pressure, it causes expansion of the gas. Having understood this, let us now come to the next type of expansion which is known as the free expansion. In free expansion, we assume that on the outside, we do not have anything, there is no air, there is no gas, whatever you have inside the cylinder and with, which is fitted with that frictionless piston, outside you have only vacuum, that is you have absolutely nothing. So if you have no molecules at all, who is going to exert the pressure? So on the outside, there is no pressure. It means there is zero pressure. Whatever pressure is there is that of the gas which is inside. So this causes an expansion. The expansion that occurs in vacuum is known as free expansion because there is nothing which is going to push it back. There are no molecules which are going to push the piston back because there is no pressure on the outside. There is nothing to exert that pressure. Let us understand this. We say in for free expansion, if there is vacuum, then P external, that is pressure external, should be equal to zero. And what is work? Work is P delta V. If P external is zero, it means that P delta V would also be zero. So for free expansion, there can be work done would be equal to zero. It means no work is done in case of free expansion. Because for expansion to occur, for it to occur, there should be something that is pushing upwards. How can it push when there is nothing to push? If you are standing here, I can push you. But you're not standing here, I can't push you. So if there is nothing to push, how is the work going to be done? So in the case of expansion in vacuum, no work is done during free expansion of an ideal gas. Although it may be expanding, it is not pushing anything. So it's a free expansion. We call it a free expansion. It is just expanding. So work done for an irreversible process is P external to delta V is zero. And for a reversal, reversible process in the previous video we had calculated that the work done for a reversible process is we integrated from vi to vf p external dv where every step was a minuscule very small step and the difference in volume was very very small which was dv so this also would be equal to zero because whether it takes place in the expansion or contraction takes place in a finite number of steps or it takes place in infinite number of small steps. In both the cases, it is pushing against nothing. Therefore, the work done would be zero. Now, let us move on to the next part. We know that the first law of thermodynamics, the equation is delta U, that is change in internal energy, is equal to the heat exchange, that is Q, plus the work done, the sum of all changes, all energy changes, in total that will tell you the sum of all those will give you these two would give you the change in internal energy this equation therefore you can write it also as delta u is equal to q minus p external delta v why because work is equal to minus remember from the previous video why we always write minus for work 
because delta v we usually get the opposite we want if work is being done by the system it means the system is using energy and it is losing it in doing that work so it is losing it so the work is becoming negative so the convention that you want for loss of that internal energy by doing work whenever the system does work we use the convention negative whenever work is being done on the system it means the system is gaining energy if it is gaining energy the work done should have a positive value in order to get that in this formula we use this negative sign because in delta v or dv or delta v we use v final that is final volume minus initial volume and that gives us a sign which is negative in this case and therefore if you want it uh, positive if you want it positive in the case when will it be positive uh, when will work be positive when work is done on the system so you need a positive convention in order to do that we always have a negative sign for the formula of work so when we substitute the value of work here into this we get that work is minus p x delta v so delta u would be equal to q minus p external delta v remember whenever you're using delta you use that uh, version which has delta in it and if this was dv sorry du small d then you would have used this expression right so for delta u we if we substitute the value of work we will do this so you can also write it as delta u is equal to q minus p external delta v imagine now that the work is taking place at constant volume if you remember from our uh, from the chapter uh, the the states of matter i told you about when we were studying the gaseous state i told you about isothermal processes processes that take place at constant term temperature i saw uh, baric processes where the pressure was constant i saw coric process is a process where the volume is constant so if we say a process is occurring where delta v is equal to 0 it means the volume is not changing if volume is not changing it means volume is constant if volume is constant it means the process well, how would we call it we would call it an isochoric process so in the case of an isochoric process delta v would be equal to 0 therefore the product of p external into delta v would also be equal to 0 in this case also the work done would be zero so when is the work done equal to zero when you have free expansion of a gas the work done is equal to zero because p external is zero in an isochoric process delta v is equal to zero therefore under this condition also the work done it would be by the system or on the system would be equal to zero if the work done would be equal to zero then what would the internal energy change depend on it would depend on the change in heat the exchange of heat that took place and that would then be represented as delta u is equal to q and we put a subscript that is v where v represents that this is a change that has there is no work term why because this process is taking place under constant volume or it is an isochoric process understood let us now move on to the next part the next type of uh, expansion that is discussed is isothermal and free expansion you have just now understood free expansion means expansion that takes place in vacuum i will i will combine these two later let us first focus we understood what an isochoric process was so now let us focus a little on the isothermal process first and then we we'll combine the two what is an isothermal process a process in which the temperature does not change a process in which the temperature does not change is an isothermal process so we can say in an isothermal process delta t should be equal to zero t2 minus t1 temperature 2 is greater or less than t1 no temperature 1 and temperature 2 that is for in during the change whatever happened when the state changed from 1 to 2 the temperature remained the same it did not change does that mean that there is no exchange of heat does that mean that we are talking of the adiabatic process that we did in the uh, in the previous part 
we discussed adiabatic processes you remember when i told you when we were studying the different types of systems i told you there's an open system there's a closed system the different types of processes that take place whether it is isothermal walls or it is what uh, thermally conducting walls or uh, not isothermal walls thermally conducting walls or adiabatic walls what is an adiabatic process an adiabatic process is one where the walls were insulated so there was no exchange of heat so since there was no exchange of heat we used a churner and when we used the churner it, it caused a movement a pedal wheel which caused work in the solution let us say we took water in the cylinder and in the thermos flask and we were churning it we are shaking the water the temperature goes up because of the work done so in an adiabatic process the temperature is not constant right the only thing is that heat is not being exchanged with the surroundings then how is it different from this isothermal that we are talking of isothermal says that the temperature is constant what exactly would it be let us imagine a situation there is a reaction that is taking place in a jar okay and around this jar is a water bath the temperature of the water bath and you know how heat is how temperature or rather heat works if the temperature between two bodies is different the hotter body always gives heat to the colder body till both the temperature be temperatures become equal that's how it always happens that's how heat works so the temperature initially when the reaction took place was the same temperature with the water in the water bath and in the reaction mixture now the expansion or whatever the isothermal expansion that is occurring due to which what the temperature or whatever change is occurring that change will cause the temperature to change but we have an isothermal we want an isothermal change so what will happen this change will take place in many many steps just like a reversible process did in every step let us say that heat is evolved or heat is being given out or the temperature of the reaction mixture is going up ever so slightly as soon as the temperature of the of the reaction mixture goes up slightly at the same time it loses some of that heat to the water bath around it so the water bath absorbs that much of heat so the temperature comes back to where it was till the next step occurs and again it gains it only slightly and again the water bath sucks away the heat and therefore the temperature remains constant so what is happening in an isothermal uh, process in an isothermal process the only condition is that the temperature should be constant it does not mean that the temperature initially is actually not changing it is changing but it from the initial state to the final state it does not change on the whole it remains where it is why because constantly it was being maintained at the same temperature right so this should explain to you the difference between an adiabatic process and an isothermal process so in an adiabatic process the walls were insulated right the walls were insulated whatever the reaction mixture was there was no exchange of heat so in an adiabatic process delta u that is internal energy sorry q q itself was zero right q delta q or q was equal to zero which means that no heat was being exchanged with the surroundings but delta t could have a value delta t is not equal to zero here due to work done the temperature could have gone down work done by the system the temperature could have gone up or down both by the system or on the system but on the whole energy cannot be exchanged with the surroundings that was an adiabatic process but in an isothermal process the temperature is constant so delta t is zero but q may not be equal to zero heat may change but only temperature remains constant so let us now understand the combination of these two that is the process is isothermal and it is also a free expansion so we should have a combined effect of both of these if it is free expansion we know that work should be zero it is a free expansion so the work should be zero and it is isothermal 
If it is isothermal, it means that temperature is not changing. If temperature is not changing, the only way how it could, how heat could change would have been with the help of work because there were only two ways, either work be done or heat be given. Now, the temperature is not changing, so and work is zero, so obviously Q is also equal to zero. And if Q is equal to zero, then if work is not being done, Q is zero, work is zero, then delta U would also be zero. Right? For isothermal processes, invariably, delta U is equal to zero. For isothermal processes, invariably delta U is zero, whether it is reversible or it is irreversible, delta U for an isothermal process is always zero. Why? When we say that the temperature remains constant, and I showed you this, that to keep the temperature constant, if the temperature is going up due to work or due to whatever reason, that amount of temperature rise is being lost to the surroundings in order to keep the temperature constant. So whether work was done or it was not done, there is no use of that work because in order to keep the temperature constant, that work is going waste. So delta U on the whole remains zero because the temperature is, you're not allowing the temperature to change. So in the case of isothermal processes, delta U is zero. But so for an isothermal and free expansion of a gas, both Q and W are zero and delta U is equal to zero. Now we come to the, again, we come back to the equation for first law of thermodynamics that is delta U is equal to Q plus W. And this can now be written, in, we, we have more versions of it based on this knowledge now. For an isothermal irreversible change. Now, when we say delta U for, the, for this equation, delta U Q is equal to Q plus W, delta U is zero. It means Q is equal to minus W. Right? For an isothermal process, then Q should be equal to minus W. We are just rearranging. The value of delta U is zero. So, zero is equal to Q plus W. Therefore, Q would be equal to minus W. We take W to this side. Having understood this, now we can substitute the value of work. Right? So, for an isothermal irreversible change. For an irreversible change, the value of work is minus P external delta V. So, the value of minus work, we said it is equal to minus W. The value of W is minus P external delta V. So, the value of minus work would be P external into delta V. Right? And what is delta V? Delta V is V final minus V initial. So, you get Q is equal to minus work. And if you substitute the value of minus work, I'm substituting the value of minus work, not just work. So if I put my, or rather work, so this minus and minus will get cancelled, we get P external Vf minus Vi. This is for an irreversible change. What if the change was reversible? Then you would substitute this value of work. So when you put the value of work for this, for isothermal, sorry, for isothermal reversible change, we had done this, the reversible change, we finally substituted this with the log if you open the sign of integration and bring it to the log of base 10. We did this in the previous video. If you do not understand it here, I would ask you to watch part 7 also. So for an isothermal reversible change, what would Q be? Again, Q would be equal to minus W and the value of minus W would be, W was minus 2.303 NRT log Vf over Vi and since it is minus, the minus minus get cancelled and this becomes a positive value. So for isothermal reversible change, the value of Q and since minus work is equal to Q, this would be equal to Q that is heat change also. And if the process was adiabatic, if it is not isothermal, it's an adiabatic process, we know for an adiabatic process, the value of Q, that is there is no heat exchange with the surroundings. So if there is no heat exchange with the surroundings, what would delta U be? Delta U would only be equal to work. And work that is done under adiabatic conditions is represented as work with a subscript AD, which means work adiabatic or adiabatic work. So, delta U in the case of an adiabatic change would be work adiabatic. I hope this is clear to you now. In the next video, we are going to start studying about enthalpy now.
So if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.